So in this video, we're going to be using a graphing utility to graph an equation. Now, there are two ways to graph a function or an equation. And the first way is by hand, where you create a table of values, you plot the points, and you connect the dots with a line. Using a graphing utility, we solve for y, then enter the equation into the y equals, and then hit graph, and change the window if we must. So in our example here, we're going to be gra using a graphing utility to graph y equals 1 over 30 times x times the quantity x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 39. So it wants us to sketch the graph below, but to also provide a table of values. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull up our calculator and we're going to go into our y equals because our equation is already set as a y equals. Let's look at that. The y is already by itself. So we can just plug that right into our calculator. So we're going to go ahead and make a fraction here. So 1 over 30 times x parentheses x raised to the fourth minus 10 x squared plus 39. So we're going to create our table of values first. So our standard table of values generally starts with a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So in our graphing utility, we want the table for that data. So we're going to go to look at our table. So we're going to hit second graph because that brings up our table. And here we see that our values for negative 2 is a negative 1. Negative 1 is a negative 1, 0 is a 1, 1 is a 1, and 2 is a 1. So as we look at our table, we have those repeats. It might be worth also keeping track of the points, let's move this up a little bit, 3 and negative 3 as well on our table because there's some valuable information there. So on our table, we saw that, let's see, a negative 3 would give us a negative 3, and a positive 3 would give us a positive 3. So we will go ahead and fill this out with a negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 3, and then that negative 3. And we'll just double check and make sure that we've got that written right. All right, so here we have our table of values. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to sketch our graph. So in on our graphing utility, we're just going to hit the graph button. So we're going to hit graph. Oh, it looks like we have a stat plot turned on. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to turn, on my, turn off my stat plot really quick. So now I can go to graph. And I can't see anything. So that tells me I need to fix my window. Well, no wonder. That's huge numbers. So we're looking at some pretty small numbers. So let's say our x minimum is a negative 10. And let's let the maximum be a positive 10. Although if we look at our table, we kind of got to pass that pretty quick. It'll be all right. So our y minimum, let's use negative 10 and positive 10. And we'll count by ones there. Now when we hit graph, we should be able to see our picture. And we can. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to sketch that. And so it looks as though we have our point here at 0, 0. And then we have the 1s and the 3s. And we can just sketch that. So we're going to come up, even, up, even, and up. So although we used those points to kind of help us, we still ended up getting a rough sketch of what that looked like. So that kind of brings us to a pretty important question. And that question is why is it important to know how to change the viewing window on a graphing utility? And that answer is so that you can see the whole graph. So you can see an accurate representation of the data, as we showed during this example. So that is how to graph a function 
using a graphing utility. Get the y by itself, plug it into your equation, and then hit graph.